The Visa is one of the most intriguing armored vehicles. It is unique in some respects, but also it's not from other perspectives. The question is why did Germany develop such a vehicle with poor protection and firepower? As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Visa and seeking answers. The Visa is generally known as the light armored fighting vehicle of the German airborne units. Some also define it as a tankette. Yet, its official definition is Waffentrager, meaning weapons carrier. The Visa was the child of the First Cold War. In this era, the Warsaw Pact, which already had numerical superiority, would turn into an unstoppable flood of steel against the NATO troops, spreading across an overly extended front if it was first to attack. To solve this problem, NATO embraced the Mobile Defense Doctrine, which depended on infantry units with high strategic deployment capability. These soldiers would intercept or at least slow the attack of enemy armored units. Then, NATO armored units coming from behind would launch a counterattack. That was the plan. Airborne troops were one of the essential elements of this plan. These units needed heavy weapons with high firepowers such as autocannons and long-range anti-tank missiles to encounter the enormous mechanized formation of the armies of the Warsaw Pact. Yet, the foot soldiers could not carry them and needed motorized weapon carriers. Even though the German army acquired the unarmored Krakow 4x4 air transportable wheeled vehicles for this job in 1971, it had already initiated a concept study for a more capable system in 1969. In 1970, the German Porsche company investigated the feasibility of suitable vehicles. However, the early concept studies included vehicles allowing transport only in a C-160 or C-130. Later, the German army changed its tactical demands and required a vehicle transported by the CH-53G transport helicopter. This naturally changed the dimension and weight criteria. In 1973, the federal government approved the full-scale development program. Several companies began to develop separate vehicles. One year later, the German army decided to continue with the Porsche's offer called Visa, meaning Wiesel. Yet, in 1979, the project was stopped due to budgetary problems. Still, Porsche continued the works with its own sources. In 1981, it became clear that Krakow's replacement was unavoidable, so Germany restarted the project. However, the German army redefined its tactical demands in 1983. So, Porsche had to redesign the Visa. Besides, this vehicle was now competing with a wheeled armored vehicle based on the G model of Mercedes. Naturally, the company made many changes. In 1986, its four improved prototypes passed the military tests. Due to the long development phase in advance, the tests ran without any major problems. So, the German army chose the Visa in 1987. One year later, Germany ordered the vehicle and test coupe and MAK, today's Rheinmetall, to serial production. The German army acquired 343 Visa in three variants between 1987 and 1993. Also, another seven vehicles were delivered to the US Armed Forces for trials. Even though the Visa had been tested and demonstrated in many other countries, Germany has remained its sole operator. The Visa's steel hull can resist 7.62mm small arms ammunition and shell splinters. The flexible self-sealing fuel tank with a capacity of 80 liters is made of reinforced fiberglass and is installed in the rear of the vehicle. A foam-like explosion retarding polyurethane liner is inside the fuel tank to prevent an explosion when it's penetrated. The low noise level of the engine improves the crew's comfort while reducing the detectability. Visa's small size and high speed increase its survivability. The exhaust gases are passed to the rear and cooled in the process. Suspension on either side consists of three dual road wheels, a drive sprocket at the front, an idler at the rear and one track return roller. A bellwell spring assembly automatically provides track tension when the vehicle is traveling. The endless rubber band tracks have wire reinforcements. Thanks to its low weight, the Visa had a ground pressure of 0.36 kg forces per square centimeter 
and a power weight ratio of nearly 31 ton horsepower per ton, giving the vehicle excellent cross country mobility even in the most unfavorable ground conditions. Its off road speed is about 50 km per hour. Besides, this compact track vehicle has good maneuverability in woods and urbanized areas. SCH53G can carry two visa as an internal load or one as an underslung load. Also, a medium sized transport helicopter such as the UH60 or Super Puma can carry the vehicle as an underslung cargo. For transport aircraft such as the C160, the number increases to four, while the C130 can accommodate three visas. Initially, the German army required that the visa can be airdropped with parachutes, but after four unsuccessful tests, it has given up this capability. Many components of the visa, including the power pack, are commercially available, which gives the vehicle an unprecedented logistic advantage and easy maintainability. The engine and transmission can be replaced in 10 minutes. In 2019, Germany signed an agreement with the FFG company to extend 181 Visa 1 service life beyond 2030. This modernization includes improving the noise and vibration signature and protection and optimizing the weight and energy balance. The Visa 1 tow is the anti-tank variant fitted with the BGM-71 tow missiles. Its launch tube, the optics plug and the ANTAS-4 thermal imaging device designed for day and night vision are mounted on the top openly. The launcher can traverse 45 degrees and elevate between minus 10 to plus 10 degrees. The vehicle can carry 5 to 7 tow twos with a range of 3750 meters and a penetration capability of 900 millimeters of steel. Later, the Visa 1 tow was equipped with an MG3 machine gun as a secondary armament. This variant is called the Visa 1 A1 tow. The A2 version has the fume forces here battlefield management system. The vehicle's tow system is now being replaced by the Spike MELLS missile with a range of 5,500 meters. The Visa 1 MK20 is the fire support version with the 20mm Rheinmetall MK20 RH202 autocannon. Designed against soft targets, it has a limited effect on armored vehicles. The sights, including the PRI Z59 with night combat capability, are mounted to the sides of the gun to reduce height. This design also increases the elevation angle. The dual feed gun can traverse 110 degrees and elevate between minus 10 to plus 45 degrees. So, it can be effective against low and low flying air targets, especially helicopters. The vehicle can carry 160 20mm rounds. The Visa 1 MK20 has a two person crew, so the commander is also the gunner. This design indicates that the vehicle is created for only infantry fire support roles, not for mobile mechanized warfare. The A1 variant has the AOZ 2000 optronic sight with a laser rangefinder, thermal imaging device, and fire control computer. The Visa 1 A2 MK20 is equipped with the PRI Z17 BM48 WBG. The A3 and A4 versions are the A1s and A2s respectively with the fume forces here battlefield management system. The V1 Afflerung is the reconnaissance variant used by airborne reconnaissance companies. It is an MG3 machine gun. The vehicle roof is raised. It is a hybrid navigation system, the AOZ-2000 autonomous optronic targeting system with a TV camera, infrared camera, laser rangefinder and communication and information system. The reconnaissance optics can be extended up to 3 meters using a lifting mast. The Visa 1 also has a driver training version. The Visa 1 tow has a 3 person crew. It is 3.31 meters long, 1.83 meters wide and 1.9 meters high. The standard combat weight of the vehicle is about 2.8 tons. The 86 horsepower Volkswagen diesel engine provides a maximum road speed of 75 km per hour. The range of the visa is 300 km. It can negotiate 0.4 meter vertical steps and 1.2 meter trenches. The studies on the Visa 2, the enlarged version of the Visa 1, go back to as early as 1981. Still, the German army waited to order the Visa 2 until the 1990s and acquired 178 new vehicles. It entered service in 2001. The Visa 2 has a doubled interior space and a fifth road wheel. 
Its basic variant has a length of 4.06 meters and a combat weight of 4.1 tons. Due to increased weight, the vehicle is equipped with the 109 horsepower Audi TDI diesel engine with direct injection and intercooler. It also has enhanced armor, an air conditioning system and CBRN protection. The V2 has an air defense command post, air defense surveillance and fire control, air defense weapon carrier, ambulance, engineering scout, battalion level command post, mortar carrier, mortar command and control, and mortar reconnaissance variants. The Ocelot, the air defense weapon carrier version, has air defense missile launchers with four ready to fire FIM-92 Stingers. It can also be fitted with the Mistral, Igla, RBS-70 and RBS-90 missiles. As a lightly protected and armed armored vehicle, does the Visa have a chance in the modern battlefield? With its small toy-like appearance, rather than intimidating, the Visa looks like a sweet baby tank. Indeed, the Visa is less capable than any modern big armored vehicle regarding firepower and protection. Yet, this is the wrong perspective. The Visa is a weapons carrier, not an armored fighting vehicle. It is designed to provide fire support to the paratroopers, not for head-on engagements against mechanized units. For this job, there are two types of vehicles. The Russians and Chinese organize some paratroop units in mechanized formations. So, they focus on air-droppable armored fighting vehicles. Yet, many countries consider their paratroop units as light infantry and use specialized tactical vehicles and all-terrain vehicles as weapon carriers. The VZ offers better protection and mobility than them. We think this is a more convenient perspective. Many will say that it is easy prey for an RPG. But an unarmored tactical vehicle or all-terrain vehicle is easier prey for even an assault rifle. Besides, unlike those vehicles, the Visa can withstand the shell splinters of mortar rounds. The many current unmanned ground vehicles are being developed for this job. The Visa is just a manned ancestor of them. Of course, unmanned ground vehicles eliminate the risk of human loss. However, eliminating the human factor in warfare is still a problematic issue. Yes, unmanned aerial vehicles and kamikaze drones are deadly threats to ground systems. Yet, Robotic systems are not the answer. If all wars could be made with unmanned systems managed by software, they would not have the need for them anyways. We would enter the data of technical capability, number and operational doctrine of these vehicles into a computer and the simulation would tell us who would win or lose. Thus, no one would die and countries would be free of devastating economic burdens. Of course, wanting to eliminate or minimize human loss is humane but not realistic. We know that no country would give up its national interest and independence just because a computer program says no. The USA did not retreat from Afghanistan and Iraq because it didn't have enough unmanned aerial vehicles. It is said that in one way or another, humans will face death in war. Besides, according to some researchers, soldiers who control unmanned vehicles in front of a screen cannot be as efficient as they would on the battlefield. The risk of losing lives and losing a remotely controlled machine can cause completely different motivations. It would probably be more efficient to supplement the visa with unmanned ground vehicles than changing it. The design philosophy of this vehicle is still sound. So, according to our analysis, the visa continues to have a function in the modern battlefield. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.